All right, welcome to It Is What It Is. I'm Sean Marie. I'm Jean. Jean's over Skype right now because of the corona. She got corona. a yeah, the corona. She got a pre-expose by her friends. I'm putting my phone on the keyboard. That's why I look like I'm fucking crazed. Cuz I'm trying to get it as close to the speaker as I can. So, yeah. It's gonna, we made it to where we thought we had it, and then we didn't, and then we thought we had it again, and then we didn't, and ah. now we've resorted to good old Facebook helping us. Good old Facebook. Never lets us down. No, absolutely. And then Jean said something about nudity. I don't know. I don't know. So no one in your house is exposed, yeah? No, we're are... fine. Been hey, checking okay. temperatures, all that stuff. Nice. <sighs> and believe me, the friend who got it, who has it, you would never think in a million years, the way that they describe it, that she would be the person to get it. So I <laughs> have no faith in this. We're all going to die. Oh, yeah. The no, minute I read her better, post. Just... Huh? What was that? What'd you say? She's feeling better? I said, she's feeling better. She said, you know when you have it, though, because you feel like you're run over by a truck and beat up, and then you don't want to leave your bed because you can't stop coughing. So that's why you can't breathe. Gross. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, since we're in such shitty situations, we'll just get right to it. Okay. Just. So, I'm going to tell you guys about the my friend Hadley, sweet little Hadley. Hi, baby. She tagged me in this on the Facebook. And so, I like this guy's shows and his podcast. He has a podcast of his very own, but he has a show on the Oxygen channel now after one of his podcasts, and it's called Up and Vanished. And his name is Payne Lindsay, which is a pretty badass name. Payne. Duh. Oh, yeah, so, and he does, um, he also has a podcast on the Atlanta Monsters. Monster. Monster. So, this is Up and Vanished, Lost in Love County, Season 1, Episode 4. And this is about Molly Miller, who's 17 years old, and Col Colton, Colton, a.k.a. Colt Hayes, who's 21 years old. And they went missing um, July 7th, 1970. I mean, wow, 1970. 2013. Jesus. Oh, wow. I, yeah, I created my own dates. In Love County, Oklahoma. And also, someone who comes in, helps out in this case, is my man, Philip Klein. From the Dior Coots <laughs> case. Oh, and, God. Yeah. He's he didn't solve this one either. <laughs> Don't know. Oh. I won't say anything about his PI work, but he didn't solve it. He did say that this is part of the top five head scratchers, though. So, you know, wow, he's, wow. he's thinking about it. Okay, so this is the weirdest story. You come to your conclusion at the end. I'll tell you the story. You tell me at the end what you think, who you agree with. Well... Everybody really agrees with what I say, but you can just tell me if you think he did it or not. Okay, so this is the story of three friends, one night, and only one person made it home that night. Wow. So there was Molly, Colt, and James Con Nip. They call him Con. His last name is Nip. He's 21 years old. He is in, they are all in a 2012 Honda Accord. The night they leave this party, they get in a high speed chase with the police. Okay. Oh. Top speeds of 120 that night. So they're, they're mobbing. Khan is the one driving yeah. the car. Okay. The chase with the cops ends at a dead end road on Long Hollow Road in Oklahoma. The chase uh -huh. went to Carter County and into Love County. They crashed through a couple fences, went and they were going towards Khan's family's property. 
is where uh -huh. they were headed. So Let's go hide it. Yeah. So at some point in time, Molly and Colt get out of the car. Khan continues on in the car. Okay. Okay. And so in the show, they talk to Molly's cousin, Paula, and her brother, Garrett, her older brother. And he was so cute, dude. He loved his sister so much. He was a proud, proud big brother. When she uh -huh. was born, he's so cute because he's all Southern because they're from Oklahoma and cuteness. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And so he's like, I told Mama not to kiss her because I wanted to be the first one. Oh. Oh, my God. Precious. <laughs> it was precious, Jean. But at okay. seven... It was cute. At 17 years old, Molly was like any other teenage girl that you've ever met in your life. Uh -huh. She um, started fighting with her mom. Started missing school. Uh -huh. Started hanging out with the quote-unquote bad kids. And she meets Colt a week before going missing. Okay. And Colt at this time... Is going through some drug problems, some heroin. Um, that's what his baby mama said on the show anyway, is that that's what she believes. Um, she, the baby mama, had also dated Khan for a long time before she met Colt. It's a small town. Yes. Her and Colt have a baby together, a son together. Okay. And she says that Khan was abusive and an asshole. But, oh, uh-huh, we'll get there. Um, the last time their phones pinged at all was on Pike Road in Love County, the night of the 7th and, er, and the morning of the 8th. So, according to the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigations, missing persons report shows that after the chase... On the both of them, both Molly and Colt made several calls to their friends asking for a ride and water. They said that they were somewhere near Oswalt's Road. No one, one friend did answer and told her that he was late for work, and so she just hung up on him. Like she didn't even have time to fuck around with it. She just hung up. Yeah. And she called a bunch of friends, but this is early in the morning, they're all sleeping. A bunch of the friends are sleeping. Colt calls one of his friends and says that he broke his ankle really bad and is laying in a creek bed. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. And at 12... I they just said call one Uh-huh. And at 12.57 a.m., Molly's phone called 911. Oh, okay. Sorry. Too soon. Right. And at 10 a.m., both phones go offline and neither one of them are seen or heard from again and the 911 uh. call was silent how long was it not very long they tried to okay. call the phone back to and the phone didn't reconnect back no one answered the phone yeah so molly's family is the one who reports her missing on the 8th uh-huh so the reason why the car chase stopped at that dead road and didn't continue on is because Khan's cousin is the sheriff, Sheriff Joe Russell at the time, and he told them to stop. Uh, like, do not pursue any so further. And they told people that Molly and Colt were just missing and runaways. Like, they were runaways. The sheriff did? Yeah, the sheriff did. They didn't follow through and go look for the kids? No. Dude, he didn't follow through and look for them at all. So, like I said, the car was found two weeks later in a field near where the chase ended, and that's also by Khan's family's property. Uh-huh. Um, it had $18,000 worth of damage to this car because they, the car had oh, been driven, wow. yeah, right, been driven through several barbed wire fences 
the captain said in 2014. And there was a lot of shit done to the bottom because he was driving through ditches. So he was trying to get away from somebody. The police. Maybe. Yeah. And how the chase started is they pulled out of the gas station and he pulled off like a douchebag. Like took off yeah. like a douchebag. So they went after him. So that's how this whole thing started. Uh -huh. like he was being a douche and that which led to a police chase. Well, they found on that. Yeah. Well, and I think I think he is just one of those people that it's such a small town that everybody knows that his cousin's the sheriff. Oh. That he's just like, WTF, I'll do what I want and do what I please. Yeah. So I think that's kind of our vibe. Yeah. Because huh. everybody says so that. He's in and it's like, this is not a small town. They all know each other. Except for the fact that yeah. Molly and Colt only met a week before. They both knew Con for a long time. Oh. And were friends with him separately. Well, not... Him and Colt were never friends. His baby mama said that he hated Con. Like, the only reason oh. she even thinks that he was in that car was to get drugs and to get heroin. She thinks. She doesn't know. But he doesn't mm -hmm. like Khan at all. Like him and Khan are not friends. So <clears throat> no one's arrested right away and it goes on for a little bit. So we're in July, right? So in, 2000, in January of 2014, so that's some distance. Mm -hmm. Khan is finally arrested and charged with el um, eluding endangering others while eluding from the police, assault with a dangerous weapon, and unauthorized use of a vehicle. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison. He only did four years. He's never been charged no. with the disappearance or in connection to the disappearance. In 2013, his sister independently, dude, went to the police station, wrote a report saying... That her brother, quote, is going to jail for murder. But nothing yeah. ever came of it. He just told uh, her that. It's a random thing to go in and tell the police. Like, make a special trip to the police station. Mm -hmm. You know. So uh. that's shady. And, like, the cops, when he's talking to one of the cops... He's just like, so you're telling me that's not, like, enough reason to go and search, like, the family property? Because it's huge. It's a huge property. Because this is farmland. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Well, I don't know if they're farms. But, like, you know, it's big land. So that's not enough. Him saying that and him being the last person to see him or anything it wasn't enough. Even though their phone's pinged and everything else, everything happens around Khan's house. These cops are like, it's not enough to go and search. It's not enough to bother this kid. It's not enough. He, he was probably a CI then, the strong guy. He what? He was probably a CI then, confidential informant. Who? Con. No, he's just a douchebag with a sheriff cousin. Huh. That's really all it comes down to, I guess, is everybody has fear of the cousin. Well... That's still stupid. So he gets to just do whatever he wants. Everybody says no one thinks that Khan himself killed them. Or at least no uh. one thinks. Nobody except for Klein, except for Philip, thinks that he uh -huh. did it. They just know that he knows what happened. Uh huh. So on July, in July of 2014, her dis. Their, both of them, their disappearances go from disappeared to officially homicide investigations. And you oh, know that doesn't happen. Without oh. something. So on September 1st of 2013, his her cousin remembers this conversation perfectly. In quotes, mm -hmm. it says, I asked Con if Molly and Colt were okay when he left them in the woods. And he said, quote, I don't know what you're talking about. I was never with Molly and Colt. I didn't leave them in the woods. Then she said it again. And then she told him, no, the call records show that your story's bullshit. She didn't say that. And he continued to deny it. 
And then she finally said, uh -huh. Con, I know she's dead. She just wants to know where she is. She says that Con teared up and said nothing more. And she said, please tell me where she is. And uh -huh. she does not think that Con killed Molly, but she does believe that he knows exactly what happened to her. So, he so he's just protecting somebody. Himself, I think. Himself and someone else, yeah. 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 So, in 2013, uh... Like I said, his cousin's the sheriff, Joe Russell, and he has jurisdiction over Love County where this ended, okay? So uh -huh. on March 29th, 2014, the 911 dispatcher okay. gets a pocket dial. On this pocket dial is believed to be Con and his uncle Colby, okay? The dispatcher okay. hears a bunch of water and some weird sounds, and then she hears... You know you're fucking mad. You know you're fucking tired. Couple minutes passed. Fucking Moxie Lake. Couple more minutes passed. A buck knife. Molly Miller. They shot him in the mouth right there. I can put my finger all the way through it. And then the call, there's like some shots made. And then the line goes dead. Okay. And okay. they even he even makes comments too that they're like Molly. Um, so she calls the sheriff, and she says, "Hey, I just got a butt dial, and I heard someone talking about Molly and Colt, and they said I mean the girl that just that was killed and dope, and a bunch of other stuff like that." I don't think they know that they were on 911. It came from a pond just north of Log Hollow Road on Oswald. Uh -huh. Okay. Shady Cop says, when I say Shady Cop, I'm talking about Russell. He's shady as fuck. He says, the phone ping near Moxie Lake? She says, yeah. He says, all right. She says, all righty. He says, Melissa? She says, yeah. He says, I want that tape ran off and I'd like to have it today. So he wants the phone tape of that conversation that she heard. He wants Did the tape of it. Did she make a cute little copy? Huh? Did she make a cute little copy? I believe so because it was aired. So either he got it. I don't know. I'm not sure. I can't say yes or no for sure. But what's important yeah. to know on that 911 call she never tells him what lake. She said... Oh. She said that it can't, the call comes from the pond just north of Log Hollow Road on Oswald. He's the one who says near Moxie Lake. So he tells her where the call is coming from and she just says, yeah. So well, that's is it common knowledge that the lake is off that road? No, that's common knowledge that, that their lake is like right off of his family property. Ah. Oh. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah. So, if you think that I'm just being an asshole to this cop and he seemed like a nice guy, he resigned in 2006. He oh. admitted to being corrupt. Um, charges of enlisting his own son in not getting, I mean, not turning his son in for dealing meth. So, and he held any harbored a fugitive, which I do believe was his son. Correct. Uh-huh. And then while on house arrest in 2007, they're doing the show. Okay, and they're like, we need to talk to this sheriff. We need to see what he knows. And they're driving down the road, and they're like, oh, shit, is that that dude right there? And they're like, yep, that's him. So Payne gets out of the truck, and he's like, I'm going to go talk to him. He goes over there, he introduces himself. He's like, hi, I'm Payne, and I'm doing a documentary about these two, and I want to know their story, or whatever. And he's like, 
I ain't got nothing to say. Every time I say it, y'all turn it around on us. And he's like, oh, hold on. You haven't said shit to me. I didn't turn anything around. Talk to me. Tell me. And he's like, no, no. What happened? Yeah. And so Payne's like, sir, the family wants answers. Just give them answers. And he's like, and I quote, which is really an asshole thing to say. I don't give a fuck about the family. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. So, in 2018, Uncle Colby got himself arrested on unrelated firearm charges. And he was oh. sentenced to 14, oh, 46 months in prison. And he gave a nice little tip saying that the bodies of Molly and Colt are in the pond. He makes this a mission and gives this tip four years after the 911 pocket dial is made. Uh-huh. Mm mm-hmm. The pond has never been searched. Why? Cops won't do it. They claim they're gonna. They haven't. It's 20 feet deep in some spots and there's always water running so it's hard to do. Oh, they have diving equipment. Stop it. Yeah. So now we're going to go to what Philip Klein thinks. He thinks what happened was they got lost in the woods because that's no knowledge. He thinks that Colt climbs a tree to see where they are and falls from sure. said tree and then breaks his oh, ankle. Shit. And then he thinks that Molly, for some reason, goes to get help or whatever. And she comes upon Con and Colby. They pick her up on like a four-wheeler ATV thing and take her back to the house and kill her is what he thinks. He said that in 2014, when he took some cadaver dogs out there, they hit on 21 spots out there. And some of them, some of the spots were right under the tree where Colt would have felt, fell. And landed. Uh -huh. And they're, like I said, cadaver dogs. So we know what they're looking for. Yeah. And it was reported to Philip that there was a fire burning a year later at that exact same spot. Like, so, like people saw a fire over there. So uh -huh. burning remains? I think yes. Maybe. And so... And then he said that a family member of Khan's gets a hold of him and he's like, hey, dude, come here. I got some shit to give you. He goes, the family member, they don't say who it is, gives him a nine millimeter and a fucking hatchet. And he says, For huh? For camping? Yes. Those are your everyday camping essential items. Yes. <laughs> so he's the person the family member says that Khan gave these things to his mom and said one day this will clear my name and then that mom took it and gave it to another family member and was like hey hold this yeah she didn't want that shit yeah and then that family member was yeah. like hey detective P.I. Have this. Ah! Chain of command. Chain of command. And he, yeah. his team, his team has it, not the cops. Like the cops. They don't want any evidence? Dude, it's insane. It's insane. It's insane. So when Philip Klein takes them out to this spot where it would be, mm -hmm. they hear like talking off in the distance. And then someone sees, like, a laser point. And then... Wow. Scope? Yep. And Khan is Ooh. on... Khan can see them from his property where they are. Like, that's how close these two things are. And he's watching them through a fucking scope. Oh, my gosh. Right. And so Philip Klein's like, we need to bust up out of here before some shit pops off. Uh-huh. 
So they leave. The new sheriff did not want to talk on the show. He didn't want to make a comment or anything. They do say that they will search the pond, but who knows when or if that will ever actually truly happen. Um, they say uh-huh. the case is unsolved, not cold. That it's still being worked. It's not cold. Oh. And one of my favorite podcasts is called The Murder Squad. It's where Paul Holes. Uh-huh. My love for Paul Holes. It's him and Billy Jensen. They do a podcast together. And they covered this story. It's episode 28 on their podcast. And they're still missing to this very day. The whole town, the whole town, the aunt says that she does, the cousin, sorry. The cousin said that she does get some justice in the fact that they are guilty in the eyes of the town. Yeah. Like, in the eyes of the town, they're guilty as fuck. People just don't disappear in the air. No. And, like, you're the last person to be with them, and then now all of a sudden you don't know where they are, and you don't want to say that you were with them? For what reason? That and like, sounds weird. And I don't... How many... Like, they made multiple calls. Your phones don't die at the exact same time. No. And that early in the morning, at 10 o'clock in the morning, if it's that early in the morning, by then lights come up, y'all can get yourself out of a situation. Oh, yeah. If you're not in harm's way. Absolutely. So, like, you're, and it's not like they were, like, lost to lost. This is just, like, a little woody patch off the side of the road. Like, it's a dirt road, from the way it looks in the show, anyway. So, I mean, you're not, like, lost back in the wood and, like, not able to find your way out of the wood. Because they had a pretty good idea. She had a pretty good idea where she told friends where she was. She wasn't wrong. Uh Uh-huh. So, I mean, she's calling for help. And then at midnight is when she tries to call 911 and then that's it. So something obviously happened after midnight, not at 10 a.m. He just destroyed the phones at 10 a.m. Uh-huh. And I think he went back when they did the 911 pocket dial. I think they went back and moved the bodies. Just like, okay, so on the show, that's what they think happened. Is that when the pocket dial happens, they're moving the bodies off of the Nip family property. And they're just taking them to the little pond. And it's not even like a pond pond that you're like, oh yeah, everybody goes to this pond. The cousin's like, we didn't even fucking know this shit was back here. Oh, really? Yeah, because there's like, it's like a little fountain thing and then there's like a stream and then it leads into like, it doesn't even look like it would be as deep or as big as you would think. Like it looks like a creepy little dark puddle. Like not a puddle, but bigger than a puddle. If that makes sense. It's not, yeah. like, massive. So, for all we know, that skeletal remains that they just chucked down 20 feet into some water. It's still there, probably. Yeah. Something. Something's there. We they, have... They do hope, though... Science right now. Huh? We have amazing friends of science right now. I'm sure it's paperwork, though, to get in there and bridge that pond... But then again, if they do prove that the uncle once again covered up now a murder of two people, is that publicity that they want to go through? Or are we just going to wipe it under the blood, under the rug and be like, well, we, our town knows what happened. Like, we don't need to prove it. We just, everybody knows. We don't need a body. Like, is that going to be the mindset forever of some, com- some rude ass corrupt cops? And I'm not saying that's how they are. At the time that his uncle, his cousin was the sheriff, obviously there's some corruption. Because that's what Mm -hmm. he was fucking fired for. And so I just don't know if it's worth it to them to get like, oh yeah, he was also corrupt with meth and two murders. Well, but what about that girl's mother? Where's her justice? 
you know. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you, yeah. I don't know. Mm. The whole thing's super sad. And still unsolved. Huh? Still unsolved. Yep. Never been found. Huh. Their bodies have never been located. Not even their phones or anything. So you're telling me all yeah. that? Like everything, clothing, everything, just... Whew. Van. Yep, nothing. That happens all the time. The only thing that was there was the broken branch from above, and that's how they kind of pieced together that Colt was in the tree. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Like, and I don't, I'm not 100% sure if he told anybody that he had, like, climbed a tree and that's how he broke himself, but. Dude, I don't know. It's super fucking sad. At 17 years old, and he had a baby, like, a, a young little man. He was a little boy. Yeah. And it's just horrible, and it just shows, like, what power really can hide. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, power and fear. That's true. And everybody said you know? that if the uncle, if the um, cousin went to prison, the sheriff, that maybe people in the town would feel comfortable and start talking. But he got, like, probation or something like that. Like, he was yeah. never incarcerated. And so they think as long as the cousin still remains there, then no one will say anything. Because I guess there's still fear. From good old... Yeah. Fear of good old Joe Russell, former sheriff. It's super sad. What an ass. So yeah, that's what the story is this week. It's short. It's sad. To the point. It's really just, it's not even a mystery, I don't think. I think the story just needs to be put out there because when people find out that there's a little sheriff out there that doesn't want to do anything to bring justice to people. Usually people uh -huh. get mad and start yeah. throwing a fit. So anything that we can do to obviously get people mad enough to want to see some justice for these people. And like, I dated a Colton. Must get him justice. Must, must. I don't know. It's super sad. I, I just don't... Yeah. And she thought she was with friends, too. So that's what makes it sadder. Is like, he obviously was there for other things, but really was her mindset that she was really with friends the entire time? And something just fuck, completely fucking horrible happened to her? I think so. And that's just super sad. That's sad. No one should have to... Ugh, I don't even know. Because we don't even know what happened to her. So you can't even say no one should have to go out like that. But, like, no one should. It's just too fucked up. Yeah. But hopefully by next... By Tuesday, we'll have this somewhat figured out better. Or something. I don't know. It was working just fine. I'm so mad. It was. Maybe we'll have to do some more messing around with it. Maybe that will curse us more. Who knows? Yeah. But we will conquer this and we will figure out how to do it. So sorry that Jean was a little hard to hear. And I probably talk over people a lot, which I know I do. So, Well, Facebook has a lag on they do. nonsense shit. They do. But we still like you guys and wanted to put out our episode. So don't give us too much shit. We'll figure it out. If all yeah. loss fails, I can always do a couple solos, and you can do a couple solos, and we'll just solo it out for a minute. Different voices. Who knows? We'll figure Everybody it out. Everybody has to adjust, to adjust to this nonsense. Yeah. Unfortunately, that is very, very true. So hopefully everybody's staying indoors and protecting themselves. My brother Derek, I, every day I get on Facebook, he's like, who wants to hang out? Who wants to meet up? He lives in Boise. I don't think he's like 100% like aware that he's not supposed to like, go outside. 
And he's like, I'm going to have a bonfire for my birthday because his birthday is in a couple of days. I think it's like a week away, maybe eight days, something like that. Yeah. And he's like, I'm going to have a bonfire. By yourself? I, I sent my brother a meme because his birthday's in... Uh in April and so I sent him a little meme and it's the guy that's holding the balloon by himself and he's sitting there at the table with the cake by himself and he's at the swings by himself and his birthday's in April oh yeah dude it's so sad and I get why everybody's so sad I'm like a professional at staying inside so I understand how this could be hard for some people but I naturally like to stay inside and watch TV I do wish I could go to the store, though, without being judged or cough. Dude, the minute you told me that she had it, I felt sick all day. Like, in my head, I was like, oh, Corona. I have Corona. I got the Corona. I got it. And then I read her post, and I was like, maybe I don't have the Corona. Who knows? Yeah. Speedy recovery to her, like, We though. haven't got it by now. I was just trying to be careful, but... I mean, my husband's not really participating with the... He's like, I'm going to do what I want. I got to go to work. I'm like, okay, bye. Well, my Eric still goes to work, too. He just... Ha and so does that. Oh, yeah. They just have to wear masks, and then I make them... Well, I don't really make them. They're both really good about disinfecting and all that shit when they come inside. And thanks to my girl, my friend, I got some stuff at the Walmart that I needed that was like hard to come by so that's awesome but we'll make it out according you to got Trump, toilet paper didn't you you just don't want to say it because you're gonna get jacked no i'm gonna break into your house and steal your fucking toilet paper lysol wipes <gasps> oh my god i'm coming yeah. i haven't seen those in weeks yeah yeah lysol wipes <laughs> yeah i feel like a baller i won't lie I do. Oh my god, I'm on my way. Lysol. Can I get five? No, because you can only buy one. So I only got one pack of three. I can't do that. I got a Lysol spray spray, too. I'm killing you. Thanks yeah. a lot. You have to go super, super early in the morning. And now Me, they're only me, letting... I'm not a morning person. Dude, they're only letting a thousand people in the store at a time. Like, you have to wait to get into Walmart like something special happens at the end. <laughs> Nothing good comes of waiting. Do you get a free cookie or something for being patient, or what? I doubt it, but maybe. Why? I just don't see them giving out anything where they have to touch you or look at you. Because people need to realize that people like my good old friends at the good old Walmart, if it wasn't for them, no one would survive this shit. Uh -huh. Or get anything. And people are being mean to my friends, Jean, at the Walmart. Mm -hmm. Everybody's getting cranky, and I read some terrible news about uh, it's not going to be back to normal pretty much for 18 months. So we got to just hold on to our britches because it makes sense. It takes a minute to develop a vaccine, and then you got to convince the anti-vaxxers to get a goddamn shot against yep. the corona. And so I don't know. We're It'll in this for the long haul, but we will we'll figure this out. We'll end up doing something. Who knows? Yeah. All right, well, you guys can follow us on Twitter at it is what it is 208 because that's where we're from. Um, join the Facebook group. There's been a lot of love on the Facebook group lately, like no comments or anything, but people adding themselves to it. And that's it is what it is, um, a true crime podcast. You guys can watch us on YouTube. It's not watching us. It's still just the audio for right now, probably forever, but that's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And it is what it is, a true crime podcast. And then um, Instagram, it is what it is, pod19, all one word. So, like I said, stay safe. Derek, keep your ass in your house. Um, everybody, everybody, just stay safe. And yeah. corona free. Fuck. Stay inside. All right. <laughs>